In today's Eye on Carnival, former Times Picayune and advocate photographer John McCusker is a New Orleans native who chronicled the Mardi Gras Indian tradition for more than two decades. But he says there's a lot that even he didn't know about the Indians, and he's sharing some of his knowledge in a new book. The Mardi Gras Indians are some of the oldest established icons of Carnival. Their tradition is the focus of the book Giacomo, the native roots of Mardi Gras Indians. Co-author John McCusker has been documenting the Indians for nearly 30 years. We asked him how he described the tradition to a first timer. It's African American people in New Orleans who spend much of the year in considerable expense uh, crafting beautifully intricate beadwork and feather costumes, uh, which they call an Indian suit, and they go out on the streets at Mardi Gras in search of others that are similarly attired. Uh, it's often called the Indian tradition, but what we point out in the book is, more accurately, it should be called a cultural system because it has its own languages, it has its own music, it has its own dance, it has its own rituals. And when you've got all those things, you're a culture. That culture was born with Native Americans who were here well before anyone else. McCusker says the word Giacomo points to that. Still used by Mardi Gras Indians today, McCusker says it could be considered the oldest word in the New Orleans language. My co-author Shane Leaf discovered the roots of the word Giacomo reside in Native people's languages. The Choctaw had a word, a Chukma, and a Chukmafina a chukma meant good, a chukma fina meant very good, and it was also used in the context of a greeting. The Mardi Gras Indians mixed those Native American traditions with West African rhythms, creating a culture that is uniquely New Orleans. This is the oldest known photograph of Mardi Gras Indians from 1903, but McCusker found an 1879 newspaper article which predates that by nearly 25 years. And he's describing the scene at Mardi Gras and he says, here comes one now. Chickamaufino, Chickamaufino, they cry out as an Indian makes his way through the crowd shaking his tomahawk. Now the fact that they would say something and quote it so closely to Giacomo suggests this isn't someone that just ran down to the costume shop and decided to dress as an Indian that year, that this is a connection to what we have now. In addition to the visual elements of the Mardi Gras Indians, intricate suits that are works of art, there is also their music. Familiar songs like Ico Ico, Big Chief, Hey Pocky Way, and more brought the Mardi Gras Indians to new audiences, as did the Jazz Fest in the 1970s. They really brought, I think, the Indians out of the shadows more ways than, um, than we really give credit for. And of course, Quint Davis is at the center of Jazz Fest, and Quint Davis uh, was behind some of the first recordings of Indians uh, with the Wild Magnolias. So that's, that's major, you can't overlook that. And with their book, McCusker and Shane Leaf want readers to not overlook the intricate history of the Mardi Gras Indians and their important place in our local culture. This tradition is very much at the soul of who we are culturally as a city. We hear words like tradition and culture thrown around a lot, but this is perhaps the oldest uh, continuing ongoing tradition or practice in this city, uninterrupted. They do it every year. These are not people of great means in most cases. They put an incredible amount of work into it and dedication. And I think they, they need to be appreciated for the gift that they give to us, both uh, in the visual displays of Mardi Gras and at the heart of our musical culture and our street procession culture. They're there at the nexus of all of that, all of who we are. And that book is called Giacomo, The Native Roots of Mardi Gras Indians, and it's available at all local bookstores from the University Press of Mississippi. Also coming up Friday morning, we'll talk about a legendary Mardi Gras Indian chief, Allison Tutu Montana. These are some of the many suits he's made over his 52 years as an Indian. 15 years ago, he died defending the Indian culture. And on Friday, we'll talk to Big Chief Tootie's son about his father's legacy and a dream he has to preserve the suits and the traditions that they represent. That'll be Friday morning at 6 over on Channel 4.